Okay, let's uh, take a look at what we call the parent function of all lines. It's the screen line here, and it's just the, the formula y equals x. The formula y equals x will make this line. Um, if we make a table of values and put in a, a 1 for x, then y equals x, so y is also 1. If x is 2, then y is 2, 3, 3, 0, and 0, negative 1 and negative 1, and so on. So you can see if we plot all those points where x and y are exactly equal, we'll get this line. Um, so some of the things about this, this parent function uh, are that this slope is up 1 over 1. The slope is 1. And the y-intercept, or what we'll come to call b, okay, the y-intercept is where the line intercepts the y-axis. So if you look at the y-axis here, the line intercepts the y-axis at y equals 0. So the y-intercept is 0. Okay. Um, let's look at another line. Let's make it a purple line that is also also has a positive slope like the the parent function. But let's look at one that is steeper. Okay. So let's let's make it just slightly steeper. And there we'll go through here uh, through the the origin as well. And look at that line and see um, what characteristics does this line have, and, and how does it compare to the parent function? Um, well, for this one, let's look at the slope. The slope is up one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So the rise is five, and the slope is one, two, three. Okay, five thirds is a little bit bigger than one. So uh, we would say it, the the picture of this graph it's a steeper line, and apparently this steeper line has a bigger slope. Um, let's try a a less steep or more shallow line. Or uh, yeah, shallow shallow doesn't seem like the right word. Less steep, I guess, is the right word. So it's a less steep line. Um, let's see how its slope compares to the green one here, and its uh, you know how big its slope is. Go up one. So I'm just going to go from here to there. M is one over one, two, three, four, five. One fifth. So that's a smaller slope than the parent function. Okay. Um, so steeper lines apparently have bigger slopes. And that could be just our, our general rule there. So if you're going to compare two lines unless they're the same line or they're parallel, uh, there's going to be a steeper one, and the steeper one's going to be with the bigger slope, and the one that's not steeper is going to have the smaller slope. So steeper lines have bigger slopes. So if we can compare two slopes uh, and see which one's bigger, that's going to be the steeper line when we graph it. Okay. Well, as it turns out, as we turn to or try to graph these uh, equations of lines, um, if we solve for y, and get y equals some number times x plus some other number, mx plus b, uh, this m will turn out to be the slope of the line, and b will be the y-intercept. OK. Um, so just quickly, how about y equals 5 fourths x minus 2? Let's see what that graph would look like. 
Let's make it a kind of a nice looking graph. Okay, so 5 fourths x minus 2, how would we go to graph this? We could certainly do um, an xy table and just plug in like 1 and 2 and see what we come up with. Um, but there's a, a little bit of an easier way. For 1, let's pick a really easy point for x, a really easy value for x. Let's pick 0. Because what's going to happen when we put 0 in there for x, 5 fourths times 0 will be 0. And all that will be left is this negative 2. So if we write it like this, mx plus b, we could put a 0 in for x, and we'll be just left with b. So we'll have a point at 0, negative 2. So there's a point there, 0, negative 2. And look, that is on the y-axis. And we know the line is going to go through this point. It's on the y-axis. This is the y-intercept, like we said before. Um, so this number right here, right away, we'll just take it and put it on the y-axis. That's the y-intercept. Uh, and as I said, this is the slope. So we'll count uh, the slope off, and we'll have a second point. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll go over 4, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's our second point. So we can just take this 5 fourths and immediately take this information from it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We go up and over, rise over run. And then we just draw our line through. There's our line. X inter or sorry, y intercept of negative two and a slope of five fourths. Okay, pretty pretty simple. There's a another form, okay, another form of equation. This is called the slope intercept form. Not a big surprise. Um yes. So this is called slope intercept form. And there's another form called the standard form. That would be when we have a number times x plus another number times y is equal to some other number. Uh, and there's a, a pretty simple way to graph equations of lines uh, when they're written this way. Let me show you how. Let's say we're given uh, 2x plus 5y equals 3. Okay. Um, actually, let's let it be 10, just so it comes out nice and round. The, the answers come out to be nice round numbers. Um, if we, let's say we create a table, some really smart choices for x and y would be, let's put a 0 in for x. What's going to happen there is the same as what happened in the, the previous one up here. Uh, when we put a 0 in for x, we put a 0 in for x, we get 2 times 0, and that goes away, and we're just left with 5y equals 10. So if we put it as 0 for x, then all we're left with is 5y equals 10. We'll divide by 5 and get 2. So when x is 0, then y is 2. Let's do that, uh, that same clever move again. We'll put a 0 in for y, and we'll be left with uh, 5 times 0, which is 0. So we'll have 2x equals 10, and x must be 5. So when y is 0, then x is 5. So now we have two points, and two points is all you need to make a line. Uh, so 0, 2, x is 0, y is 2, there you go, y is 0, x is 5, and now we have two points and we can draw a line between two points. And there's our line, straight between those two points. Okay, that's standard form.
I don't. I mean, there's there's lots of different kinds of equations. There's uh, there's linear ones like this. There's quadratic and cubic and square root and logarithmic and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they all have their standard form, and they all look a lot like this when they're in their standard form. I don't know why they're standard because what we normally use, what we'll tend to use, is slope-intercept form. So that's really kind of the standard. So it's kind of a weird thing, but that's what it's called. It's called standard form, even though slope-intercept or even point-slope form. Uh, which we haven't seen yet is preferable, um, but sometimes the way things are is the way things are. So uh, let's I'm gonna jump back up here. I have more room, and we just have a couple more things to talk about when graphing lines, horizontal and vertical lines. All right, so let's talk about an equation that looks like this. Y equals, and now there's no x, there's just, say, a number. Y equals 5, okay? If you pay close attention here and, and you remember what I'm about to say, you take a good mental note of it, it'll help you out. Because there's a lot of confusion over um, Y equals 5 and, say, X equals 3. You know, these are, are two... Uh, different lines that we're going to make and there's confusion over to which one is vertical and which was horizontal okay um, why is vertical and so you might think that this guy here if you had to choose between the two would be vertical and that's what a lot of people make the mistake of thinking but we want to graph um, all the solutions to this equation okay in other words we want to graph a line that um, makes this equation true. Okay, So this equation states that y is equal to 5. y is always 5. So whatever graph we make, whatever line we make, it needs to reflect that, that y is always 5. So let me uh, grab another color and I will show you um, this horizontal line, which is exactly what we should be graphing. When you get y equals, that's going to be a horizontal line. And look at y. Because this horizontal line, what's the y value for this horizontal line? Everywhere on this horizontal line, y is 5. y is 5 here, and it's 5 here, and it's 5 here, and it's 5 here, and here. Everywhere that you look, the y value of this line is 5. Okay. The mistake that gets made a lot of times is, say, we'll put... 2, 3, 4, 5. Because y is vertical, we think y equals 5 is a vertical line, and so we'll graph this vertical line through 5. Okay. Now, okay, you did incorporate 5 in there, and, and you said, well, y is vertical, so why not make the line vertical? But look here, right here only, right here, is the only place where y is equal to 5. Here, y is equal to 0 y equals 0 there, and here y might be equal to negative 6, and so on. This vertical line does not show that y equals 5 all the time. Okay, So let's look at x equals 3. x equals 3, which I'll outline in gold. We need to draw a line where x is always 3. Okay, let's, let's find a place where x is 3. Easy enough, right there x is 3. Okay, how would we draw a line where x is always 3? Well, x is 3 here, right here, only here, not over here or over here or over here, but just right here. Okay, so it's you know, the same point I was making with the y equals 5. This vertical line shows us everywhere that x is equal to 3. Everywhere along this line, x is equal to 3. It's equal to 3 here. Right, x is 3 here, and it's 3 here, and it's 3 here, and it's 3 here. Okay, so y equals a number is a horizontal line. And x equals a number is a vertical line. Okay, those are important things to remember. That'll do it for the intro video. Thanks for watching.